Hey everyone, welcome back for another brand new video about that universe that just killed its firstborn, The Walking Dead. Warning, beyond this point there are spoilers for people who are not up to date in AMC's The Walking Dead TV series as well as the comic books. In this video we're going to give you part 1 of our Rampage rankings of The Walking Dead's 50 most important characters versus their comic book counterparts. We're going to talk about each character's first and last moments which will help us decide who is the better version. To be clear, this list isn't in any specific order. We're not making a list of which survivor is the best, we're making a list of who is a better version of that same person. So sadly, that means we won't be seeing Daryl or Jerry. Now it's time to get right into our rankings. Rampage. Number 1. Tyrese in both the comics and the series, Dude was a former NFL player and a beast with a hammer. The major difference between these two versions is the way that they die. In the TV series, Tyrese is bit by a creepy little twin walker and has a drawn out painful death, while in the comics he gets a quick beheading in front of the prison by the governor. We're going to give this matchup to the comic book version. Number 2. Shane this is pre-Punisher Bernthal really bringing his A-game in the start of the series. In the comic books, his character was more minor and only made it to issue number 6. His death is a much bigger moment in AMC's version, so this round hands down goes to the TV series counterpart. <laughs> number 3, if you can remember him, is Otis. You know, the guy that shot Carl? Otis is important because in both universes he accidentally introduces Rick's group to Herschel's farm. He only lasted 2 episodes in the series, but in the comics he was around for 26 issues. Kirkman made Otis's character a racist because he felt the other survivors had been too nice up to this point. In the books, he makes it to the prison and is last seen helping the group fight their way out in Dale's RV. Otis dies off screen pretty brutally as his remains kind of freak out Rick before he puts him down. Shane's double crossing of Otis is memorable as well. Even though it was negative, Comic Book Otis had a better impact on the series and takes the win this time. <laughs> Number 4 is a little complicated because Deanna Monroe in the TV series was gender swapped from Douglas Monroe in the comic books. Both were leaders of Alexandria, although Douglas was kind of a dirtbag, and Deanna's death was definitely the more powerful moment as she went out blasting to distract the herd while Douglas blindly fired as he was taken down by the comic version of that same herd and ended up putting out Carl's eye. For that reason alone, the TV version of this character is the victor. Number 5 is the kid of number 4, Spencer Monroe. His TV counterpart's introduction is a little more charming than the comic book, Blink and You Missed It version, although both characters' deaths are pretty much the same. This is a real close one, but we have to give this matchup to the TV series Spencer. Way to have guts. <laughs> Number 6 is the first survivor on the list, Eugene. Both versions of this guy are introduced the same way and are smart enough to weasel their way out of anything. TV Eugene does have a sweeter ending with Max and his baby daughter, although comic book Eugene seemed happy in his own way as well. Because AMC's Eugene helped win all out war and beat up multiple stormtroopers, we have to give this round to him. Number 7, King Ezekiel. These characters have strong introductions given the fact that they both have tigers named Shiva, but the comic book version of Zeke never made it past the pike deaths and was interestingly with Michonne at the time he died. Although Ezekiel's beheading was a huge moment in the comics, his TV doppelganger's survival throughout the entire series to lead the commonwealth is a great story and make him the winner by a country mile. Numbers 8 and 9 are two characters who are introduced together and end the series together in both the television version and the books, Yumiko and Magna. Both sets of these characters are in relationships, although the comic versions of these characters are not as involved as the AMC versions, especially since Yumiko gets Michonne's Lawyer Commonwealth storyline. For that, we have to give both rounds to their TV counterparts. Number 10 and another character gender swapped from her comic book version is Kelly. Both were introduced with Magna's group, although the comic version was more of the strong silent type and was actually Connie's boyfriend. It's not known whether Kelly lives or dies in the comics, but he is last seen defending the communities from a herd. It's a close call, but we're going to give the comic book version of this character the win here. Number 11 is another blast from the past you might not remember, Jim. In both the comics and series, his intro was forgettable as he was just sitting around one of the first times we see the campsite community where Rick is reunited with his family. Both versions of the character end up bit, although the comic version has a nicer goodbye, so we're giving this matchup to Robert Kirkman's iteration of this character. Number 12 is possibly the most terrifying villain in both series, Alpha. 
The Whisperers really change everything when they're introduced into either universe, and Alpha's introduction is iconic in both outings. Alpha's death in the comics is a little more epic, and for that reason, we will give this round to the comic books. Number 13 is Alpha's Dauda, Lydia. Both variations of this character are introduced similarly with a very much alive Jesus showing mercy to comic Lydia. The comic version of Lydia ends up really close with Carl and even ends up getting the Grimes family hat in the end of the series. TV Lydia, however, stays more central to the storyline and core characters through the end and although it costs her an arm, we are giving this point to the TV version. Number 14, Andrea. Her intro in the TV series was intense and maybe gave her a bad start. The comic version of Andrea has a much more casual entrance and ended up living way longer than her TV counterpart who was attacked pretty hard by the fans early on. Comic book Andrea ended up being Rick's wife and a mother to Carl. She lasted to the end of the Whisperer War and got bitten saving Eugene from the Horde. Her death was a sad moment in the comics that prompted Kirkman to write an apology letter to the fans, so we think comic Andrea is the clear winner here. Number 15, Herschel Green. Both iterations of this character have essentially the same intro, a farmer doctor who saves Carl's life. Herschel in AMC's version gets a kind of remix of Tyrese's death and is much more impactful to Rick before he dies. Comic book Herschel gives up in the prison attack and actually asks the governor to put him out of his misery. This match definitely goes to the television version. You have to wake up. Number 16, Sadiq. His introduction in the series ended up being a big moment since he was the last person Carl brought in while his comic introduction is a trivial argument about construction being behind schedule with Andrea. The comic book version of this character is last seen at a very special funeral for a main character and is assumed to be alive at the end while the TV version didn't do so well and never survived the Whisper Award. Both characters had relationships with Rosita although the comic version had an affair with her while she was married to Eugene. Given the fact that AMC Sadiq was a doctor and had a key death in the Whisper War, we are giving this round to him. And I think she left me alive to tell you that story. To scare you and to drive us all apart again. But I want to tell you a different story. Number 17, Jesus. Both variants of this character had memorable introductions, but in the comics, Jesus beat the crap out of multiple members of Rick's group, including Abraham. Jesus in the TV series ended up dying prematurely due to the actor's unhappiness with the role, while comic book Jesus survived all the way through the end and lived happily ever after. This time, we gotta give it to the comic book Jesus. Number 18, Aaron. Both versions of this guy introduced Rick and company to Alexandria, but the TV version ended up being more central to the series once Rick disappeared. Both characters made it to the end, but TV Aaron was more of a badass. Even though comic Aaron got to be with Jesus for the rest of his life, we still have to give this matchup to AMC's version. I never thought we'd get back to any of this. I'd hope, but we're all very lucky. Not luck, it's effort. We have a lot to be proud of. Number 19 is a one-shot character, Lucille. She makes this list because of her importance to Negan and all that great chemistry the real-life husband and wife had in the TV show. Both pushed Negan to be tougher and both ended up succumbing to their cancer, although the TV version ended up suffocating herself so she didn't have to suffer anymore after Negan was sidetracked trying to get her medicine. The comic version silently passed away in her bed while hooked up to the machines, but both deaths are really sad for Negan and humanize him. This is a close call, but the real-life husband and wife take the prize here. Number 20, the leader of the saviors, Negan. His introduction is equally iconic in the series and the comic books. Although his paths diverge at the end of All Out War, both sides of the Negan coin have great character growth. Towards the end of the comics, Negan pretty much disappears, while in the TV show, he's instrumental in the concentration camp uprising and the Commonwealth's final fight. This is another close one, but we have to give it to the TV counterpart. Number 21 is a day one OG in both universes, Morgan Jones. Both versions of this character knock Rick out before showing him the apocalyptic zombie ropes and both part ways with the sheriff before being reunited later. TV series Morgan survives through all that war and leaves the show to go be invincible in the fear spinoff while comic book Morgan got bit in the Alexandria herd and never survived. The television counterpart is the clear winner here. You don't clear me, you turn. Number 22, Governor Pamela Milton. Pam in the comics has a more ominous introduction while her TV show Doppelganger has a more fun one in the big Halloween festival. We quickly find out that TV show Pam is the more evil one when the shit hits the fan. 
Both versions of this character make it to the other side, although AMC's Governor Milton ended up a prisoner by the end of the series, while her comic book iteration is free and visits her murderer son Sebastian, who also lives. Because she ends up with freedom and an alive son, we're giving this match to the comic book Pamela. Number 23, and the Michael Jordan of killing walkers with a sword, Michonne. This character had a more iconic TV show introduction than her comic counterpart, but nobody will ever forget her walker pets. TV series Michonne leaves early, while her comic version ends up using her lawyer skills in the Commonwealth, and by the end of the series, she is a legit judge and a very happy grandparent. Although we love TV Michonne, it seems Kirkman's imagining of the character wins here. We are the ones who live. Number 24, Judith. Both were born in the prison, although Comic Glory survived Judith's birth, which spared Carl that terrible duty of finishing off his mom. TV Judith is a major character after Rick's disappearance and stays central to the main storylines up until the end. Comic Book Judith? She lasts about 9 issues and never makes it out of the prison as the governor orders one of his people to shoot Lori in the back while she's hiding her newborn daughter. In the TV universe, Judith is a total ass kicker and the clear champion between the two. You get to start over. We're the ones who live. Number 25, and the last one on part 1 of our video is the man, the myth, the throat biter, Rick Grimes. The comic and television intro for this character are pretty much identical, but throughout the series, lots of things change for these two leaders. Comic Rick doesn't quite make it to the end as Sebastian shoots him right before the penultimate issue of the series. RG still has a huge effect on the comic survivors' communities and even gets a statue built in his name. TV series Rick has a much more mysterious ending. It's for that reason we are calling Comic Rick vs TV Rick a complete and utter tie. There's no Walking Dead without either of these characters in their respective universes. Long live Rick Grimes, may he rest in peace. That's it for part 1 of our Rampage rankings everyone. Right now the TV characters have won 15 matchups versus 9 comic book character wins. Who will be in part 2? Is the TV show better than the comics? Well, the comics don't have dogs so you do the math. Thanks so much for watching our videos everybody. As always, we're on the lookout for any new promos or insider information to help prove or disprove all the rumors out there about our favorite show that has a higher death count than some small countries, The Walking Dead. Please let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok at Binge Rampage. Click that notifications bell for our channel so you can see our next video as soon as it comes out and don't forget to subscribe. Stop! We're opening the gate and letting these people in. I'll kill anyone who tries to stop. Stop or we will be forced to shoot you. We'll fire back.